All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Granite Rocks Product Knowledge Seminar. My name is Jackie Serrano, and I will be your host today. For today's seminar, we have a very special guest who is an expert in the world of aggregate products. For everyone's information, we will be recording this session to grant replay access to those who are unable to join our live event today. Before we get started, we ask everyone to please keep yourselves muted and camera turned off. The chat is open, so we encourage questions or comments throughout the meeting. If you happen to have a question, please add it to the chat section and we will try to answer them as soon as possible. I will now hand it off to Adrian. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Adrian Aguayo. I am with the outside sales team for Aggregate and HMA out of Aromas. And today we're going to be talking about Granite Rock Base Rock. So I put together a presentation here for us that I'll share and we'll go over, go over a few things. Let me know if we can see my screen here. Looks good. We are good. Go ahead. Okay. So, so Granite Rock Base Rock by Adrian Owayo. And the picture that we have here, it's some class two base rock out of our AR Wilson quarry and aromas. So here's a little table of contents for us. So we're going to go over what is base rock, uh, what makes a good base rock, the durability, different types of base rock that we offer, moisture density curve and compaction. And at the end, we'll go over the availability by branch where you could find it, as well as we'll close that out with the lead program for those looking to get uh, points uh, for the green building console. So what is base rock? Base rock is a blend of fine and coarse aggregate. Uh, it is designed to compact and create a stable base or foundation for structures and roads. It can go up to an inch and a half maximum size and more commonly found in a three quarter. And I put a couple pictures here. The one on the left hand side is our class two base rock out of aromas. That will be our three quarter virgin. On the right, you could find our class two, which is the inch and a half base rock. So similar products, uh, but one is going to be a little bit larger. The nice thing about our base rock and aromas is that it is a crushed material. And what we're looking for with base rock is for the material to interlock the uh, coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate to you know, make that stable base. So crushed aggregate works perfect for that. What makes a good base rock? So the ability to compact to an um, impermeable- Adrian, can material. I jump in for a minute? Of course. What uh, what is class two? Why is class two versus class one? I always like to go first class. So um, you like to go first class? <laughs> Me too, Keith. But I can't afford it all the time. <laughs> so for class two, these are these are specifications through through the Caltrans book, and and each each section is going to determine the class. So as as we go forward in the presentation. I have uh, the different sieve analysis that will show us will show us the different classes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And right here, I also put a picture of some of our class two virgin base rock at a project that I worked on, and this was the Walnut Terrace Apartments. They made a nice fire road in uh, Greenfield, California. So let's go over the durability. So we test to see how easily base rock breaks down when su subject to an abrasion cycle in the presence of water. So water is something that is going to really affect the material, and that is a good way to put it to test to see how durable it is. So aggregates are weaker when inundated with water. Abrasion cycles in 10 minutes of shaking in water. So this is a test that we do where we put the materials in, in a tube and it gets shaken up. So we try to see how much of that material stays together. The fine material and the coarse portions are tested separately. The lowest uh, result is used as, as the durability index. Uh, durability is part of section 26 uh, specs for the Caltrans standard book. And um, it is unclear what performance benefits a high durability index will ensure. So here's the different types of base rock. So we have uh, sub base, which is uh, in the Caltrans section 25, and then we have a uh, base rock, which is in the Caltrans section 26. And here we're going to see the different the different classes. So this would be our our sub base uh, per 
California Transit uh, Section 25. So these are the seat sizes for class one, two, and three. And then we see the operating range and the contract compliance. What we're looking for is the operating range. So these are the different uh, sieves, and then you will see the percent passing that we're looking for uh, on each one of these uh, classes. And then at the bottom, we have the quality requirements. So same same breakdown, uh, class one, class two, and class three. And then we, we show the operating range, which is what we're looking for. And then we also show the uh, contract compliance. And then we have here the sand equivalence and the uh, R value, which is the resistance. So I put together uh, this from the Caltrans section 25, so we can all get a good visual. And this is for the sub base, which is uh, one, two, and three. And then this is for base rock. So this would be class two and three. Uh, this can be found in the Caltrans uh, section 26 standards book. And these are the aggregate grading requirements on the top. And then at the bottom, we'll have the quality requirements. So the sieve size, and then we're looking here at the percent passing for the operating range, and then also for the contract compliance. And what we're looking for is to stay within the operating range. Now, here's our moisture density curve. And what is the moisture density curve? So what we're looking for is we're looking for the, the highest maximum density that we can get, and we're trying to find what compaction at what moisture is going to get us there. So as the moisture goes up, so does the density until it peaks and then it begins to drop. And then this tests are according to uh, ASTM D1557. And I also have a, a sample curve from our material that we can show. And why, why is it important? Why do contractors request a curve? So it is the responsibility of the contractor to meet the required compaction rate. They need to know how much moisture needs to be added to the product to achieve compaction, as well as how much compaction they should apply. Since compaction is the responsibility of the contractor, we expect them to arrange moisture density testing per project on the received product. Often compaction begins before the contractor has received a curve, so they will request a pre preliminary maximum density and optimum uh, moisture from us. Moisture density. Uh, results are shared as typical ranges, 122 to 128 pounds per cubic feet and 9 to 12% moisture. They're not presented as suitable for measurements of compliance, but it's a general reference for the contractor who is awaiting official results. So how do we create this curve? We prepare samples at various moistures in a steel mold. Second, we compact using a 10 pound mechanical hammer. We weigh the compacted samples, the wet density, to determine the moisture of the compacted samples, we remove the weight of the added moistures. So how much water from the weight of the compacted samples to get the dry density. So we plot the moistures versus dry densities on a chart and draw a curve through the points to create the moisture density curve. Using the curve, determine the maximum density and optimum moisture. And moisture density curve here. So we're going to talk about the typical specification language for moisture density and line stabilization. Performing the stabilization shall confirm the following. Add lime in the amount specified by the geotechnical consultant. Lime treat subgrade soils from back of curb to back of curb to a depth specified by the geotechnical consultant. Mix in two mixing periods, both with tines lowered to the same depth. Both mixing periods shall be monitored and verified by the, by the geotechnical consultant. The second mixing shall occur at about 24 hours after the initial mixing. Compact and grade the lime mix subgrade immediately after the second mixing. Compact the lime treated subgrade to 92% as determined by ASTM D1557. 
after application of the curing seal, do not allow traffic on the lime treated material for a period of seven days in lieu of the three days specified in section 24.1.03 of uh, Caltrans standard specifications. Proof roll the stabilized subgrade after compacting to confirm that a non yielding surface has been achieved. Yielding areas, if any, shall be mitigated. Mitigation could consist of over excavation, utilization of stabilization fabric, or chemical treatment. Each case shall be addressed individually in the field by the geotechnical consultant. And this is a sample of a dry density curve here. So, as we can see, the optimum moisture here was eight and a half percent. And then the max dry density was 144 pounds per cubic feet. And this this uh, this is a curve that contractors would uh, request from us for for their projects. And then here we have the availability by the branch. From our Aromas Air Wilson Quarry, we carry class one, two, and three subbase. And then we also carry our class two and class three base rock. So we carry both virgin and recycled materials. At our capital branch in San Jose, we carry our class one and class two base rock and all subbases as well. And in capital, all of our materials uh, would be recycled. Uh, same as Redwood City. Uh, they only carry our recycled materials. So the only place to get the virgin granite only material would be here in Aromas. And for recycled materials, they qualify for the LEED program for the Green Building Console. And our base rock, our recycled base rock, would be considered 100% post consumer recycled, which means that you get the maximum amount of points if you're working on a green building uh, with the LEED program. And we can get you certified. You just need to contact our lab and they can get your certification. Thank you. Thank you. So Adrian, uh, mm -hmm. um, Adrian, what, um, these are primarily building materials customers. Mm -hmm. And so where would they most, what's their most frequent application for base rock? So your base rock, you would use it under under any. So it's it's used as the base for any. Uh, I mean, concrete, asphalt, or a structure that you might be wanting to put on top, and it creates a nice stable base to have a, a good foundation. So um, interlocking pavers and stuff like that too. Correct. Yes. Guys, what co what other questions do you have out there? Michael and Chago, Bronson. Does the recycled base rock uh, mean outcomes? I I couldn't catch that, Michael. Sorry. The recycled base rock. Does it does it meet Caltrans spec? Yes, yes, it does meet all of our recycled uh, base rocks meet Caltrans spec. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of people, we sell a lot of ant stock, you guys' virgin base rock, and uh, a lot of people like it. Um, it's super clean. Uh, I haven't really had any complaints about it, so anytime someone's asking for virgin, I definitely try to sell your guys' uh, virgin base, you know, or the recycled if they're doing pavers. A lot of people, when they do pavers, they use the recycled base rock and then the grain of sand on top. Right. Yeah, for, for our uh, virgin base rock, um, a lot of feedback that we get from, from our customers as well is that it works really well also when flooded. So mm -hmm. our our um, air Wilson finds uh, work really good even you know with high high moisture, uh, whereas a lot of other materials um, they tend to start failing. So our proc our proctor curves tends to stay a little bit uh, longer. Um, so it works really well. Well, and then what a lot of people the, like is, is it's not clumpy. A lot of virgin base rocks come clumpy in balls and rocks and stuff like that. I notice your guys is, is never clumpy. I really can never, you know, sometimes there's soccer size base rock that we see. Yeah. That's, you know, you know, how are you going to sell that? You guys is pretty, right. pretty good every time I order it, you know. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's always, uh, it's always easy to work with and, and, uh, a lot of projects, you know, they like to use our, our virgin base rock. 
for daddies. And there's no there's no uh, lime, correct? No lime, no. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what people like about it. Right. I think something to make note on besides the base rock and, and the applications, turf, pavers, things like that, is that the quarry is the place to go for the permeable applications. Class two perm keeps popping up for underneath permeable pavers. They got the ASTM 57s. You can run through them, Adrian, and uh, up to the quarter by 10 so that you can make that permeable paver application. Right. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, we, we do. We definitely do carry our, the class two perm and and uh, to set up. I, I've been hearing that uh, the permeable pavers are starting to become really popular. So definitely the AR Wilson quarry is the, the spot to come and get all your materials. What are some of the challenges and pitfalls that you guys have seen um, out in the field for maybe a smaller contractor or, or um, uh, maybe somebody that hasn't been schooled properly? Um, what do you guys see out there? And this can come from anybody. What are the challenges you see around getting a proper base then? Uh, some of the challenges, Keith, that we've seen is um, on, on some jobs, filing, finding the right moisture um, to, to get the optimum compaction. Uh, another thing that we recently saw is making sure that the subgrade is ready to, to you know, get base rock on top of it. So understanding that base rock can get 100% compaction, but there's a lot of factors out, out there that are outside of the actual base rock's control that can affect it from getting that, you know, optimum compaction that we're looking for. So, you know, making sure that your subgrade is ready to have the base rock placed on top. Uh, and then also understanding uh, how much moisture to use to go ahead and get that opti- uh, optimum compaction. So those I are some of the challenges that, that we've seen. I think an, another one that pops up to mind is the smaller contractor or the DIY, DIY. Mm-hmm. I think it's DIY. Yeah, they right. uh, they need a lot of help figuring how much they need. And the nice thing about Granite Rock is that we have the calculators, thanks to our marketing team. And we can help with that process as long as they have a, a length width and how much they need to put down as far as uh, thickness. And we can help with that. I think that's one of the things we really run into trying to get the material there one time, trying to save them uh, freight on a cleanup load if it all fits in one truck. And splitting loads is another nice thing that comes out of the quarry. They can mm-hmm. carry 12 tons of one material in one box, 12 tons of another material in another. And that typically on the smaller job, that'll that'll get you done at one shot versus paying a trucker two times to yep. come out of the quarry to your job site. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a huge yeah, that's a huge win right there when you know I've I've seen customers that are doing a smaller project and they'll get a transfer load and the first box would be you know base rock and then the second box would be utility sand. So they can get it all knocked out in, in one load and save some money and time. Good, good information, good up, updates there, you guys. What else do you see out there? Is there anything else uh, that, you know, the smaller, smaller contractors, uh, like challenges that you guys see? I, I know with us, uh, we, we, you know, we do the, quote, the bigger jobs and, and a lot of the times, uh, our customers, uh, they'll, they'll communicate with us or directly with the lab. But I know with the building materials yards, maybe some of those customers uh, come back to the to the locations or branches and and ask questions there. I think uh, <clears throat> I don't we don't run into too many hard things availability on products, but that that ends up being more on the building material side of things. The quarry is ready to go. It's. Yep going to be a, a hard thing to try and find them with a material you need that they don't have. So I don't think that that poses any challenges. I think mostly getting pavers, the concrete materials are getting hard to come by. Prices are changing monthly, weekly. Um, and those are some of the challenges, but that falls more into the the building material side of the world. The quarry, you're not going to catch them 
without material are recycled plants. You're not going to catch them without material. So that's something that customers can be comfortable with. Uh, they they know they can get it. Days notice, right. we'll put it on the ground for them, and that's something that they don't have to worry about versus a challenge. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice thing. We have what you need as far as aggregates and sands. Yeah, and another another thing too that that you know I encourage you guys at at the building materials yard to do is you know to to work with us. I know Chago and I have have worked with uh, with customers where you know they'll they'll come in um, or they'll they'll reach out to us at the quarry for like a large sum of say base rock or just any aggregate. And as we start visiting these jobs and getting to know these customers, we find out that they do a lot of, say, landscaping, for example. And I, I know me and Charles have, have worked with a few accounts where they'll get some materials from us and then we kind of make it into a one-stop shop where, you know, they'll have me for for the aggregates and then they'll have Chago for a lot of the building materials. And, and those are uh, huge wins where we use, you know, we try to use all of our resources to to maximize and make it easier for our customer. Good good points. Um, I dropped that calculator link in the chat box for anybody that's interested. Um, everybody, and there is, everybody should have that key. I use it daily, yeah. multiple times a day. It and, is a yeah. awesome resource. And it's a free app too, so you can just download that uh, app if you want, uh, or if your customers want. Um, can if you guys, um, what are some of the typical challenges that, um, this, again, the smaller contractor or somebody that maybe isn't schooled real well have on uh, reaching compaction? Um, and again, Adrian, we're kind of talking to the building materials uh, audience here. Um, so it would be like under pavers and stuff like that. Like small stuff, yeah. I think uh, from what I see that the, these people, you know, they rent the equipment and uh, it's it looks easy on YouTube, but then you'll over compact or you won't have enough moisture. And it's it's really a visual thing, right? Mm -hmm. They set their grade and then they compact and then they get their base rock ready and they come in with their sand. But there is nobody testing. There's the, Our lab is not out there making sure they're not taking core samples. So it, it's a visual thing. It's it's something that they have to learn from experience, right? And it doesn't always go that way. But I think our material, our virgin base rock out of the quarry is in itself helps that contractor because like Adrian said earlier, it's tolerant to a lot of water. It comes with some moisture and you can flood the thing still get your compaction you're gonna have some water coming out of your surface but it will get hard versus other materials that are not crushed or have round sand or round aggregate in it the virgin base rock out of the quarry is gonna be your most user friendly when it comes to the base rocks and that in itself i feel is gonna help them achieve that compaction easier faster and get on to the next thing yeah very true chago um, if if it has you know a little bit of room for you know we can say error uh, of of overwatering and and the materials you know going to work well with it then that's that's a huge win for for our customers just in case you know they're new to this and and they don't know how much water to add to get that op optimal con compaction and uh, you know I, it's I, I highly doubt that you know our lab is going to be out there for a small pad or something that's you know it's just a customer doing something at their own home. So, you know, our, having a forgiving aggregate that is still gonna work well, it's, it's a huge win for, for you know, smaller, smaller customers. Adrian, is there an easier way to like tell like when you've added too much water or when you need more water to like compact it? Yeah, so just, it's just kind of... if, if, if the customer's not doing, you know, proper testing or having a lab, uh, they can do a, a hand test. So if they if they grab a pile of base rock and they you know they crush it with their hand, if it's something that's kind of falling apart and it's not really getting that compaction, it's probably too dry. Um, now if it's too wet, what will end up happening is when they squeeze it, they'll have some of that material kind of you know coming out of their their fingers. The the fines is is too wet to hold together. So 
when they have that optimum, you know, moisture, when they when they squeeze it, it should kind of form a dense, like impermeable uh, mass in your hand, and you should be able to kind of, you know, it should, it should hold together. So that's kind of a, a you know, a, a simple uh, way that a contractor, a smaller contractor can kind of see where they're at and, you know, whether to add more water or if they've already overwatered. That's really great. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Good information, Adrian. Thanks. Thank you, Keith. What's uh, what's the preferred method of contacting the quarry or the transportation group these days? Is there an email that we want to call a certain number? So we can we can always call our our sales office at 831-768-2380 and we'll get you routed and squared away through there. We have a list and Maribel at the office that are great and they'll get your call transferred to one of us. Um, we tend to be out in the field uh, more than than in the office. So even though we all have extensions, the easiest way is to call the the sales office and then they'll get you guys transferred over to us and it'll route it straight to our cell phones. Perfect. If I place an order today, how soon can I get it? So typically we try to we try to go for next day depending on how how busy we are um depending on how many you know trucks are available but i would say anywhere between 24 to 48 hours is is the usual but we try to strive for next day and uh, also we we've, we've had you know scenarios where a customer is pretty open with their schedule and if we have a truck that frees up that same day we'll, we'll go ahead and get that loaded and and deliver same day as well Faster than Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Prime <laughs> delivery. All right, guys. Um, well, thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate your participation and hope it was of your liking. We also hope to see you all here today, Thursday, November 17, to further expand your knowledge on Radiman Stone, same time as today, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Once again, I would like to take Adrian for taking time today to share his knowledge with us. That concludes today's product knowledge seminar. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.